If you're thinking about moving abroad, we always recommend taking an exploratory trip, and that is what we're doing right now. After we check each country off the list, we're going to share our thoughts about the 10 factors that matter most, like safety and cost of living, to answer the big question, could we live here? Today's video is about living in Portugal. Unfortunately, the government recently announced a change that may cause a lot of you to cross this country off your list, but we will talk more about that later. Before we dive in though, hit that subscribe button if you're planning a move abroad so you can follow along as we explore some of the most popular expat destinations around the world and share our thoughts about living there. Now let's take a look at Portugal to see if it's a good place to live based on the 10 things that matter most, starting with the residency visa options. Now this may be the most important factor when you're considering a country to live in because if they don't have a visa option for you, then it's a total non-starter. There are two types of D8 visas, a one-year temporary stay visa and a two-year residence visa. Both require a minimum income of 3,040 euros per month. If you choose the two-year residence visa, you'll need to obtain a NIF number, open a Portuguese bank account, and provide proof of accommodation. The D7 visa, which has been around for quite a while, is a passive income visa. You'll need at least 760 euros per month to qualify, and you'll need to obtain a NIF number and open a Portuguese bank account. You'll also need to provide proof of accommodation. You can't be out of the country for more than six consecutive months, regardless of which type of visa you get. That means you will be a tax resident and you'll be required to pay taxes in Portugal. Currently, the NHR tax scheme is scheduled to end on December 31st, 2023, which could cause those tax rates to go up significantly. And we'll talk about that more in the cost of living section. The next factor we're going to talk about is safety and stability. And Portugal is ranked number seven on the Global Peace Index. It is considered an extremely safe country, one of the most safe countries in the world and in Europe. We felt so safe walking around day and night, and we walked all over the place around Porto and other areas, and I never got the heebie-jeebies from anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the PM just resigned, which triggered new elections that will be in the spring of 2024, so I'm not sure we can call the government very stable because this is the second time this has happened in the past two years. So if this had happened in Ecuador, it would be all over the international news for weeks, but it just got a kind of a minor mention because of Portugal is, you know, a higher, higher level in Ecuador, I guess. Next up are weather and natural disasters. And we experienced a lot of weather during our short trip to Portugal. We were in the Green Coast region, which includes Porto, Braga, and other areas that are popular. It is cooler and wetter there, especially in the fall and winter. And we experienced a lot of rain and chilly temps. The Silver Coast is from south of Porto to north of Lisbon. They have milder winters and hot and dry summers. Then you have the Lisbon Coast and the Algarve region on the southern coast. Both of those areas are much warmer and drier. The inland regions are cooler in the north and warmer and drier in the south, as you would expect. You also have the islands of Azores, which have really mild temperatures, and Madeira, which is like San Diego or Hawaii. Overall, Portugal is known to have great weather, so you are bound to find something that appeals to you. You do have to worry about a few natural disasters in Portugal. They do get those big storms off the Atlantic occasionally. One of them hit while we were there. It actually went north and hit France and the UK really bad, but we got the southern end of that with a lot of rain and wind. There are also some, been some issues with droughts in the inland areas, which have led to fires. And occasionally they even have an earthquake. So there are a few things to consider when you're planning a move to Portugal. Health insurance and health care are super important and Portugal has excellent health care. It's ranked number 20 by CEO World. Now, thankfully, we had no need to use the health care system during our visit, but we have heard really good feedback from other expats who live in Portugal. We did go to the pharmacy to get some medications and we had a really good experience there. The people were super helpful and they spoke English, which was really nice for us. Housing is the next factor because you got to have a place to live and there are a lot of different housing options for you to choose from. Yeah, you'll, you can find condos and detached homes. You can live on the coast, along the beach, or in a big city like Lisbon or Porto. The prices are lower outside the main cities though and in smaller cities like Braga and Coimbra are much more affordable. Yeah, if you want to live in the heart of Lisbon and Porto, you are going to be paying a lot more to rent or buy a place. And the properties are in general quite a bit smaller, especially compared to what we're used to in Ecuador. We talked to a few locals while we were there about the housing 
kind of issue and they have said that the prices have gone up quite a bit over the last few years in fact according to the stats have gone up 48 percent in the last like four to five years which is a pretty steep increase it's getting to the point where some of the locals are actually having a difficult time finding a place to live food and restaurants are the next factor that matter to a lot of you including us there are several different grocery store chains in Portugal, like Pingo Dos, Continente, Mercadona, and Frois. And you're going to find the Mercados kind of like what we're used to in Ecuador, too, only they seem quite a bit nicer. There is a lot of variety of foods that you can find in the grocery stores and in the Mercados. Plus, there's also specialty stores like Asian, Indian, and Korean. We were extremely impressed with the quality and the quantity of restaurants in Porto and Matosinhos. We found a wide variety of cuisine, both local and international. We found fast food, casual dining, even high end. We got dressed up for dinner one night. We found a lot of restaurants that cater to people with different dietary requirements, and it was really easy for us to eat out. Unfortunately, it was a little too easy. <laughs> yeah, I think we ate out way too much, and we didn't cook as, as much as we like to. Cost of living is the next factor that matters to most of us. The first thing you want to look at is the exchange rate. And right now it's a dollar seven cents to one euro. That means you're going to take a 7% hit on your cost of living just by moving your money from the U.S. You also want to think about sales tax. The Portugal sales tax is at 23%, although they do have a tiered system. Some things are at 13% like wine, and then some things are 6% like food, and then they did have some things that were at 0%. So it's not 23% for everything, but that can add up. One way you're going to save money is with no tipping that you're gonna cut 20% off of your dining out bill because tipping is not common or expected in Portugal. You need to consider income tax as well and the current NHR tax scheme does not tax foreign source income and it does tax Portugal source income but at a reduced rate. It does tax foreign source pension income, although it's at a flat rate of 10% instead of that variable rate, which goes from 14.5% to 48% depending on how much you make. Assuming they do cancel this program at the end of 2023, new residents, those of you who are not already part of the NHR program, can expect to pay higher taxes. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Although the prime minister did just resign, like we mentioned earlier, so that might delay or even cancel this planned termination of the NHR scheme. But what we're hearing right now is that it may just delay it, but probably won't cancel it. The next cost to consider is health insurance. If you're a resident, you can take advantage of the public health care plan, which is mostly free, but there are some minimal fees. One thing to consider is that it can take longer to get to see a doctor and get procedures done. Or you can get private insurance, which is very affordable. You're looking at maybe $50 to $150 per month per person. It really depends on your age and circumstances. A doctor's visit, if you just want to pay cash, is usually around $40 to $50. Let's talk about cost of eating out, one of our favorite things to do. In general, we paid anywhere from 15 to 30 euros for lunch and 30 to 50 euros for dinner, and that included wine. And that was for both of us, not each. We found the grocery costs in Portugal to be similar to Ecuador, maybe a little bit higher, although some package items were significantly lower, like the almond and soy milk that we drink. In Ecuador, it was $3.59 for one of those little liter containers. In Portugal, it was $1.59, so $2 less. The produce in the Mercado was a little bit more expensive compared to Ecuador, especially for things like avocados and mangoes, which were more than double, but that's not a surprise considering they're imported. But overall, the costs were still significantly less compared to what we paid in the United States, about 50 to 70% less. Rent is usually the biggest expense. You're looking to spend anywhere from 700 to $1,500 per month to rent a condo or a home really depends on where it is, how big it is, and what kind of amenities it has. The overall total cost of living for a single person can run anywhere from $1,800 to $2,200 a month. And for a couple, that can range from $2,500 to $3,000 a month. But this is outside the major metros. If you want to live in Porto or Lisbon, you can expect to pay quite a bit more. All right, so the next factor we're going to talk about is walkability and public transportation. It's important to us because we don't want to own a car. The cities and towns in Portugal are really designed for walkability. There's lots of local neighborhood shops. The sidewalks are nice. There's crosswalks and cars actually stop for you when you go to cross the street. 
The country has an extensive rail system, so you could travel city to city with your luggage. The local metro and buses are super easy to use. There's taxis and Uber as well. We walked around all over the place and it was super easy and we never felt unsafe. Now let's talk about quality of life. And there are tons of things to do in Portugal. You have the cities, mountains, beach, surfing, cycling, hiking. You've got gyms and yoga, museums and concerts. You are not going to be bored in Portugal. Everyone was super friendly and welcoming. We have heard that people are nicer in the northern part of Portugal compared to the south, though. Yeah, let us know what your experience is with that. We also did not experience any of the anti-foreigner sentiment that we've heard rumblings about online. And people have even asked us about about that in the comments section of our videos. And we, we didn't experience any of it while we were there. Another factor to consider is the language barrier and unconventionals. Portuguese is hard. It is so hard. What's weird is it looks like Spanish, so we're able to read it. There's a lot of overlap in the words. They're spelled very similar so we can actually read it, but the hear it pronounced is completely different. It sounds more like Russian than Spanish. And we even talked to some Brazilians who said that the Portugal version of Portuguese is a lot different than the Brazilian version. Apparently they drop a lot of syllables and letters from their words. They pronounce things differently. And the Brazilians we talked to said that they even have a hard time talking in Portuguese to other Portugal people. So that made us feel not so bad about our struggles with it. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to take some lessons if you want to move to Portugal. The good news is, is that there are a lot of English and Spanish speakers. So if you're coming from a English or Spanish speaking country, it should be an easier transition. Yeah, we spoke English most of the time, but if someone didn't speak English, they almost always spoke or at least understood Spanish. So we kind of use Spanish as the bridge language in those situations. So we found it very easy to communicate. They're a lot easier than we expected. Before we give our verdict about living in Portugal, we want to share some interesting observations with you, starting with there is a lot of recycling. They charge for grocery bags and for to-go containers. Yeah, we were kind of surprised when we asked for our leftovers at the restaurants because they serve so much food that there was a charge anywhere from 50 cents to $1.50 just for a container to take home our leftovers. And they charge 10 cents for a plastic bag, which I'm okay with because I always try to remember to bring my usable bags. Another interesting thing is you have to pay at the counter at most restaurants. We found this very strange because then we had to play like, where were you sit the where were you sitting game and we're like pointing and the waiter or the, the cash register person would count the tables to figure out which bill belonged to us. We found that very interesting. It happened at multiple restaurants. There were only a couple where they brought the check to the table and allowed us to pay at the table. They're very demonstrative. We saw a lot of people gesturing with the one hand, not like the Italians who use a two hands. They were one hand and they were very passionate with their conversations. And they were very loud too. The Americans like us get the bad rap about being really loud and loud talkers, but we were really surprised to hear them talking so loudly and leaning in and using that one hand and talking extremely loudly on the streets to each other. It felt like we were back home again. And now for the verdict, is Portugal a good place to live abroad? Well, we're going to give it a solid maybe, and that's only because of the tax advantage that is scheduled to end. If they get rid of that, then it's probably not a great option. If it, if they keep the tax advantages, then we definitely will keep it at the top of our list. Yes, but if they cancel that NHR tax scheme, there is no way the taxes will be way too high. Which would be really disappointing because we think Portugal would be a great place to live and get our residency and call it our third home. Let us know in the comments what you think about Portugal by posting an emoji thumbs up or an emoji thumbs down, or just share your thoughts with us. If you found this video helpful, we think you're going to enjoy this one from Porto, Portugal next. And the country we're in right now may be even more popular with foreign residents than Portugal. So remember to hit that subscribe button so YouTube tells you when we post those videos. Before you go, leave us a like, please, and we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.